live in an interesting time. There's probably not been another time in history when people borrowed so freely from other people's spiritual practices and religious beliefs. Think about it. Therapists and counselors teach their clients to use techniques from Buddhist meditation without really knowing anything about Buddhism. There are people who burn sage and sweet grass in their homes thinking that they're exercising some sort of evil spirit whenever these are ceremonies meant for healing and well-being. There are people who go to studios and, and health clubs and lay on mats and stretch and think that they're becoming something like the great spiritual yogis from, Egypt, from India. In all of these cases, people are taking bits and pieces of spiritual practices and using them in new ways that don't represent the culture that they come from, from the belief system that they come from. And this is cultural appropriation. It's an extension of colonialism. In colonialism, people took from other cultures and made it their own. They robbed great works of art and other important things of value from cultures and took it and made it their own and put it in their own museums. This is a very similar thing. But since it's around spirituality, we often don't notice it. Today, I want to talk about spirituality, spiritual practice, and cultural appropriation. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel, as well as to ring that bell so that you're notified of future videos. So yeah, I get it. People find a great deal of personal fulfillment and well-being from using techniques and practices from other spiritual traditions, traditions they didn't grow up with, traditions they really don't know about. But I want to talk about what's ethically questionable about that. And a way I want to do that is by using the example of a Native American writer, a scholar, Vine Deloria, who in the early 1970s wrote an important book entitled God is Red. God is Red explores Native spirituality and religion and culture in a very thorough way. And one of the things that Deloria talked about was this colonization of spiritual practice. And to make, and he makes a um, comparison to help understand what's happening when people take things that were really out of context. The example that he uses is, if you can imagine, a random indigenous person coming from a reservation and going to a great Roman Catholic cathedral, maybe St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. And this indigenous person goes in, he sees where the priest's vestments are kept and puts them on. He may not put them on correctly, but he throws them on and goes up to the high altar, opens the book, starts reading the prayers out loud and making some gestures. And after a while, he says, that's a Roman Catholic Mass. Anyone who sees that is going to know that that's not a Roman Catholic Mass, that that's not how it's done, that's not who does it. In the same way that people would be offended by that if they were Roman Catholics in that cathedral seeing it happen. So indigenous people are offended when they see their culture used in ways that is out, totally out of context, that bits and pieces are taken. And it's not just indigenous people who have this experience. Buddhist people, Hindu people, people from other cultures, see the way that their spiritual beliefs and practices have been appropriated by others and are really shocked and offended by it. And in the meantime, we rationalize doing it by saying, it brings me a sense of fulfillment. So, I've talked about in other videos that I've studied with teachers from traditions other than my own. I've studied with Jewish rabbis, I've studied with imams and roshis and, and all kinds of different people. What makes that right? Why can I do that and talk about that? Well, one of the things I learned very early on, and, and again, the easiest way to talk about this is, is from my Native American experience, 
is that when I started learning from Native American healers and elders, the first lesson they taught me was that if I want to ask a question, if I really want to learn, then I first need to give. My asking for something is built on my willingness to give. The gift may simply be the traditional gift of tobacco, but the gift can be tangible. It can be something that can be used in the community, you know, like household goods or a blanket or even groceries. It's in the act of giving that one shows one's willingness to build a relationship. I found that true whenever I was studying with, with a guru at a Hindu ashram who said that, sure, he would take time and teach me some things about Hindu spirituality, but that if I was going to do that process, enter that process, I had to be willing to teach. He asked that I teach a series of seminars to a few select members of the ashram who wanted to compare Hindu meditation with Christian meditation. So he wanted me to be the voice of, of the Christian contemplative tradition so that there was a relationship, there was an exchange. When I wanted to learn about Islam, I was told, sure, the, the Imam is willing to teach you about Islamic spirituality. But first, start attending Friday prayer. Come and meet people, be with people. You see, in every case, there was a way in which to approach this. There was the right way to build the relationship. And often what happens with cultural appropriation and spirituality is there is no relationship. So if you want to learn about particular practices, look around in your community. Are there places to go where there are classes where you can attend or, or something where a, a Buddhist temple is offering an open class on meditation. That's the place to really begin. Remember that it's important to create the relationship and to be connected to the culture and to the people and not just be looking to fulfill your own needs. Because spirituality really isn't about your own personal fulfillment. Spirituality is about our transformation in connection with others building a better world in relationship with others. It's compassion for ourselves and compassion for all people. And when spiritual practices are inappropriately taken from other contexts, when they are really appropriated, they really reduce the other culture. They're breaking it down. It's a colonialization process. And you may feel good about your own fulfillment, but you're reducing and diminishing others. So I'd ask that you take some time and think about that and how you approach other traditions. Thanks for your time today. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Click the bell so you're notified of future videos. Like the video, share it with others, make some comments, and know that I really appreciate the time you spend with Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a really great day.